Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to be taking a look at comparing mixed downs. So in the previous video we've applied some of the presets in the master rig processor in WaveLab Elements and rendered those down to some mixed down files. And in this video we're going to take a look at just comparing between different audio mixed downs that you've done which is say I'm rattling on about this but it's an important part of your your process because it's very easy to to go down the wrong road and kid yourself that everything you've done sounds amazing i've i've done this on uh, many an occasion but by by applying this process and starting out particularly during the the mastering phase starting out with the original mix down and then your improved versions as you master it and sometimes as you go back to the cubase project and fix things as well because you may tend to notice things as you're doing this listening in wave lab and go oh yeah actually i, I want to change this or the mix isn't right or sometimes the the mastering processes you've applied work okay but they highlight something that's wrong in the mix that needs fixing so anyway this is an important part of the process so i'm just going to run you through how to do this so here we have an empty project in cubase elements and we're just going to import those mix down files so we can do them in multiple imports at the same time so we go to file import audio file which you've probably seen before in a previous video in the series and then we're going to go and find those mix downs so those are in my music folder on this mac and there you can see we've got these mix downs from previous and the original as well so i'm going to highlight those just going to highlight this that that, that and that and then import them all so when I click open, importantly, it says copy all files to project folder. Please make sure that's ticked. Say so that's the that's the prime directive. If you remember nothing else, remember that always make sure that's ticked. And going to click OK. Now it's going to ask a question. Do you want them on different tracks or one track? The default is one track. That's almost never what I want. It's nearly always different tracks. So here it will create the audio tracks for you. And now we're going to take a look at them. So we're going to get rid of the uh, inspector on the left. So that's on the Mac, it's Command Alt L, but on PC it's Control Alt L, and then that just gets rid of the inspector because this is one of the few times when you you don't actually want the inspector on screen. Going to make these, just drag that to the left to make that a little bigger. Um, Shift H zooms in vertically, and now we can see the differences between them, and you can see we've we've got the original here. So I'm going to move that original up to the top because that's where we started out. And then we can see all these different versions here. And just by hitting S on the keyboard, you can get to appropriate parts. Now you need to be careful with this when you're soloing. If you just do this by moving around on the keyboard, so here I'm moving up and down with the cursor keys and then hitting S as I go. If you let off that, obviously this is gonna be apocalyptically loud because you've got, in this case, five very loud tracks playing at the same time. I'm not even gonna do that because somebody will complain in the comments. So the way that I've taken to doing this is to use what I see as the override solo, which is if you hold down on the PC, it's control and click on the solo button, but on the Mac, it's command and click on the solo button. But what that does is that turns off the other solos. So we never have a situation where we've got multiple tracks solo at the same time or all of the tracks playing. So by doing this, you can see that even though I'm clicking on this here, this one will get turned off. And that just makes life much easier to deal with. So you can just do that there. If we listen to this quiet section to begin with. And solo some of the others. You can hear that that electronic dance one is much louder the pop one though is is almost at maximum level already and you can see that this pop one is just flat the whole way through so it's going to be incredibly compressed compared to the original progressive one less so but again going back to the original you can hear this one's much brighter much bigger but then once we get, generally it's once you get to where the kick drum etc is in, that's when you have the... And finally the EDM one, which sounds a, a bit... I'm not sure about the, uh, the EQ on that, it sounds a little odd to me. Yeah, that's that I'm, I'm saying no to actually, but... 
Again, comparing this to the original. To my ears, sounds a bit distorted, sounds a bit too much. The electronic dance. Which is a nicer one than the progressive one. So this, I, I'm not sure if you can hear. I'm just going to stop that. But listening to this pop mix, that I can hear that pumping. So it's it's the if you listen to everything but the bass drum while I'm playing this, listen to the level of how the pad changes because because the comp the way the compression's working, it's bringing down the level of everything else. So if we listen to that just for a few seconds, because say it's quite. It's like the whole mix is being side chained because the, the kick drum is, is bringing that down. So I'm, I'm not liking that on this particular mix. I'm sure there's plenty of other things that that will work well on. Of these at the moment, I'd say probably it's between progressive and electronic dance. And I need to listen a little more, but this has already been been useful because you can compare these sections. You could set up a loop. Say if you grab the tempo of the original from your original project, and then you could even set up a loop and go between them on different sections, etc. But it just makes it so much easier to compare and contrast because I probably wouldn't have noticed the more subtle differences between these had I just been listening in WaveLab. Whereas when you can listen to exactly the same part straight away, it just makes it so much easier. So. I would probably now pick which one I wanted between the two of these, so whether it was electronic dance or progressive, and then go back to WaveLab and do some refining of that. So that's going to be the next thing we're looking at, is changing those presets, just tweaking them a bit. So I'm going to pick a winner out of these two, and then I'm going to go back to WaveLab. So in the next video, what we're going to be looking at is just fine-tuning that and refining this process, because generally you wouldn't want to go, yeah, I've done it with a preset, done with that because it's very very unlikely that a preset will be perfect so for instance this edm one there's some aspects of this that i like but the eq is is definitely not for me because it sounds hollowed out it's it's too extreme as we saw in fact remembering back in the video we saw that the the eq was quite severe so maybe with toned down eq the rest of the settings could be could be good but you've got kind of options anxiety here and there's an, an infinite number of possibilities we could take but instead of doing that i'm just going to pick off off video i'm going to pick between this one and this one and whichever one i think is the uh, in quotes winner in the next video we'll be going back and then choosing which one to refine further and make some other mix downs and then pick the finished version from that so i hope you found this useful and we'll see you again soon